Hello everybody and welcome to another quick Dwarf Fortress adventure mode tutorial. In this video we're going to be talking about scavenging for food, with some caveats. Do not ever eat blood amaranth, even though they are edible, because it's poisonous and it will kill you a couple days after you eat it. Let's dive in. The first thing I need to note about this adventurer, currently it is late spring, early summer, and we're playing a dwarf who needs to eat and drink. If you want to completely avoid having to eat and drink as a necessity, I recommend playing as a goblin. They do not need to eat or drink and thus allow you to negate this entire feature. This tutorial will not be covering butchery, this tutorial is specifically about foraging for food in forests and, of course, foraging for food in the naturally occurring food deposits in human cities, which it's perfectly legal and okay to take from. So when we glance around in this forest, you can see that there are some plants around. There are maize leaves, there are mung beans, mung bean pods, as well as taro. Taro is a root vegetable, in which needs to be uprooted and then cooked in order to be eaten. Many fruits, such as mung beans, can be picked, and you can grab their mung bean pods, but they are not edible, unfortunately, and your dwarf will simply lick them. Certain other types of creatures, like a lot of animal creatures, will only eat meats. So you need to make sure that you have meat available, which means you must be restricted to the human villages and naturally occurring meat deposits in the human meat markets. Or alternatively use butchery, which at least at the time of recording is not available in the beta. So right here, you're gonna see that we have a guava tree. If I scroll up using the mouse wheel, we can actually look inside of this guava tree. We can see that we have guavas as well as pomelos in the pomelo tree next door. Let's climb this tree and see if we can eat these. So I'm gonna hit this button down here, the hold button, and we're gonna hold onto the guava tree trunk. This then makes the adventurer get this grabbing icon beneath it, indicating that we are climbing. Now I can hold shift and right click to attempt to fell the tree, which would be a little bit counterproductive, or I can hold shift and then hit up on the arrow keys, and then we can climb up. Once we've climbed up, I'm going to pick a pomelo. Let's see if these are edible. A pomelo is sort of like a weird green orange thing for reference. And we eat the pomelo. So right there, you've now seen an example of gathering fruit from a fruit tree. Now, in order for all of this to work, they have to be in season. This current save is running in late spring, early summer. Throughout the summer seasons is when food is available in trees like this. So I recommend you stock up. It's not going to go bad in your backpack, and you can store it in places. If you actually pick a pomelo, uh, you'll notice very quickly that I can just continuously do this, as well as the guavas, which I'm also pretty sure are edible. Let's eat one and just double check. So now that we've picked a few of these, you'll notice very quickly that they're actually infinite. You can just infinitely pick edible pomelos and edible guavas. And then I'm gonna select my backpack down here and we're gonna scroll down and see that, oh man, well, we've got quite a few in our backpack now. A number of uh, pomelos and guavas. Well, this is like a good week's worth of food almost at this point. Let's keep picking. So now that my backpack is full of fruit, I'm gonna move down a layer using the mouse wheel and right click the ground. So now that I'm done filling my backpack with edible fruits, I'm gonna scroll down a layer and we're gonna right-click the ground. Right-clicking the ground will allow my dwarf to climb down, and then we can move over to our horse and put our new found foodstuffs onto our horse. I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard to place item, and then I'm going to place item in the horse's backpack. And we're just gonna do this with most of these fruits. Now, with Dwarf Fortress, things are a little bit opaque. As I mentioned earlier on, blood amaranths are poisonous, even though you're able to eat them. Dwarf Fortress might just let you eat something that's poisonous, so if you're curious about whether or not something is edible, this is gonna seem a little silly, Google it. And the reason I suggest this is, if it's poisonous in real life, it's likely to kill you in Dwarf Fortress. Zack and Tarn are pretty committed to making things in their video game that are accurate to reality. While some things may be able to be cooked in fortress mode and thus making them edible, in adventure mode, they're likely to kill you. Over here we have strawberries and strawberry plants. So of course I can pick a strawberry and those are delicious. I can pick them by right clicking the plant and picking them or hitting G and clicking pick the plant. Now we also have bitter orange plants here. These are also edible and I can also consume them. I've also found things like lettuce plants. I found things like spinach plants, both of which have been edible as well as cabbage heads, which have also been edible. Let me know down in the comments section if you find any plants that I haven't mentioned yet, because there's a lot of them, that you've been able to harvest and eat in adventure mode. I'm now going to mount my horse and we're going to run into town and we're going to talk about the naturally occurring food markets in human towns. So now this isn't going to be the most successful for everybody. You're going to need human cities that are rather large in order to successfully loot food from the naturally accuming human food deposits. One of the ways to do this is simply pop into a human town and then pop your nose into every single house you see and then run into the back and look for bags specifically. When you find a bag, take a peek. 
and then scroll down and have a look at what's inside the bag. Look at this. Every single one of these bags has 50 to 100 Fisher berries. Fisher berries are edible. This is a naturally occurring human food deposit. Let's see if we can find a naturally occurring human meat deposit. And yes, you can take these without any repercussions. At some point, there will be a change to theft in Dwarf Fortress, and I will make a follow-up video or simply replace this one when that happens. But at least for right now, there is no real actual threat to your person if you go around stealing stuff from towns. Killing people, on the other hand, uh, might actually net you some negatives. At the back of this house, I found another virtually infinite food deposit, and this is never going to go away. Let's try a little bit of a smaller town and see if we can get similar results. I've found a town that's half abandoned, so we'll see what the results of here will be. This one actually has stuff growing outside. Let's take a peek. Oh, look at this. This one has cucumbers. I pick up a cucumber and put it in my backpack, and we eat the cucumber. Mmm, delicious. Just be wary of all the poisonous blood amaranth. And since these cucumbers, when they're in the season, are essentially an infinite supply of food that you can just harvest indefinitely, at some point, when we do actually get repercussions for theft, I really hope that Dwarf Fortress gains some sort of limitation on the amount that you can harvest. But in the land of plenty, where nobody wants for anything food-wise, why would you bother going after somebody who takes from it? This is a much larger human city with a massive castle in the middle. Let's see what our luck will be like here. It's also worth noting while you're traveling around in human cities, if you look up at the top right, you can actually see what's in the general vicinity, so you don't need to run around on the street level. Although, I need to do some more exploring, but this might be limited to playing as a hero. So up here, you can see this icon right in the entrance of this castle, where it says empty market in a whole bunch of places. Let's drop down. And if you walk around, you can clearly see that there is a lot of very armed guards. Do not be afraid of these armed guards, as they will not harm you for taking the food. At least, at the time of recording. Do check the upload date, and if this has changed, I will leave a note in the comments section. Otherwise, what you would be doing is you would be using the barter system, which is yet to be re-implemented into the game. So if you gather some meats, instead of them charging for it, you can simply just put them into your backpack and walk away. And look, they even have a fine selection of camel cheese and horse cheese. I'll bet you Kumil, my horse, feels real great about this. Of course, dwarven locations can have food as well, so I'll show you where you can find some food in dwarven fortresses. As I'm traveling to the nearest dwarven fortress, to give you more examples, I've noticed that there's lime trees nearby. I might have to stop and pick some. Also growing on the ground, we have some wild strawberries. Delicious. Now, when you're looking for dwarven settlements that you can effectively get food from, have a peek at the type of fortresses that you're close by. The first ones we see are hillocks. These are above ground areas that have farms. Sometimes these farms can have harvestable food similar to the human towns we were just in. But you want something that can give you more variety, but also be accessible. So I would recommend avoiding the dwarven mountain halls, as finding the entrances to them can be, well, difficult. However, getting into a dwarven fortress is not so, such a big feat. So there's one right here, Verse Fountains. Let's find the front door. Food in elven locations is often seasonal, and while sometimes you can find bags of berries similar to human towns, I find actually finding their food deposits a little bit more difficult. Now as we move up this way, there is an entrance to a dwarven fort around here, so let's start moving towards this temple and see if we can spot it. Ah, there it is. A little bit tricky to see. If you are having trouble locating a, the entrance to a Dwarven Fortress, simply click on this button just to make sure that you are on top of the icon that you are looking for. But this is what we need to find, so let's drop down. Actually locating the Dwarven Fortress at this point is pretty easy. Just head in the direction of the fortress on your compass. You will not have a compass if you are not playing as a hero. I do recommend playing as a hero for this reason. You'll find this big square block. Simply scale the outside until you find the door. And now we're in the entrance of the Dwarven Fortress. These do run a lot better than they did in older versions of the game, even though they can seem like they're running a little slow. And then what you want to look for is you want to look for the nearest trading depot. There will probably be one of these very close to the entrance of any populated Dwarven Fortress. And then simply walk above it, find a stack of items, and press G. And scroll down. Anything with the little dollar signs on it are for sale. Now. Once again, check the comments section of this video. If there is a pinned comment from me stating that you now need to pay for these items, it'll be listed below. I'm sure it won't be too hard to, you know, gather up some gear from willing traders uh, on the streets that you find who happen to have clothing and you simply take it from them with some tactical wrestling. I'm sure it'll be quite easy to get trade goods for this purpose. Scroll down until you find some food that suits your fancy. In this case, this uh, troll tripe seems like a good thing to take. Just simply grab it. And congratulations, you have acquired lunch. 
Of course, when you're in a dwarven fortress, there's also going to be public taverns on the surface. These often have liquor as well as mugs to serve yourself the liquor, and sometimes have tavern keepers that will let you stay the night. But be very wary with the alcohol. Adventure mode is in fortress mode, and you can quite easily give yourself alcohol poisoning. So if you're going to start chugging booze, maybe limit yourself to three glasses tops. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful. A couple tips on how to scavenge for food in populated and unpopulated places. Dwarven fortresses and human towns. If you would like to... If you want to help everybody out here, leave a comment down below of your favorite way of acquiring food outside of butchery. And in the future, once it's available, I will be making a tutorial on butchery, of course, and hunting. And I'll probably lump tracking in with that one as well. If you'd like to see more videos about Dwarf Fortress, check out this YouTube channel. I've got, a, I've got more videos than anybody could reasonably watch in a short period of time. And I've got a growing playlist of adventure mode tutorials as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.